I have a producer, or I have two producers who actually defined an era of music. When you talk about high life, when you talk about hip life, which was such a dominant time in our, in our music history, these two producers played a key role in making sure this era was actually dominant on the continent of Africa. And I'm talking about, the, the first producer I'm talking about is right here with me in the studio. And I'm talking about Frederick Che Mensa. Everybody knows him as Fredima. That's right. Good evening, sir. Thank you. How are you doing? Ah, Charlie, you can't complain. Really? As the rainbow settles, that's yeah. how. You also are, like, in the local parlance, Nyankuntong Konya, you heard it, Oh, Nyankuntong Konya. You know, yeah, you know, rainbow, when it settles, it goes, yeah. you know, slowly. Then it drops. Yeah. That's right. Then we the check what God will do. That's right. That's nice, that's nice, that's nice. But, I mean, how's the year been for you so far? Uh, ah, well, it's, it's been a bit rough. Mm. In April, I felt sick, you know. Oh, sorry. I was admitted at the hospital, but tell hey, hey. Man. I'm fine now. I'm good fine to now. see you. Yeah, good, good to see you here with you. your legendary cap. You, you Always see, repping. Oh, that's my identity <laughs> now. You know. Yeah. And then also on Zoom, we have a Pietus, who, I mean, uh, was actually also a legendary producer in, our, in that era that I'm talking about. Ladies and gentlemen, a Pietus. A Pietus, good evening. How are you doing? I'm good. And yourself? I'm doing very, very fine. Uh, I can see you are still in studio. Uh, you know, you, you cannot. They, have you ever been out of the studio like a day where you like a whole day that you've not been to the studio? Like you've not entered the studio at all? Has it ever happened in your life? Of course. Most oh. of the time I'm in the house. Oh. And does it feel weird? Does it feel weird that. That you are out of the studio, like today, you've not done anything beats. Does it feel weird? Mm -hmm. Now, let me, me pet Netflix and chill, you know, sometimes, you know, I'm home chilling, but I mean, most of the time, if I have something to do, then I'm here. Oh, okay. And I like to work, you know, odd hours and all that, you know. Oh, oh okay, 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 okay. Odd hours comes with like a lot of creativity. So we'll be looking at that as well. Yeah. But hey, you walk up to the chat right here on Channel One TV. Now, I'll start with you in studio. Uh, Today, I want to like understand, you know, that era of music. I mean, especially delve deeper into your lives because we look forward to celebrating you. And this is on the back of recently we had an industry mixer where we celebrated Stone Boy, and both of you were present at the event. In as much as we're celebrating Stone Boy, the spotlight also settled on both of you because you guys played a key role in our music industry. To I mean, how far we've come, we cannot tell the story without you guys. So, I just want to know. Fredima, how long have you been in the music production space? Yeah, next year in 2025 will be 40 years. Next year, 2025, will be 40 you'll be years. 40 years. Yes, yeah, solid. Since 1985. Wow. When I completed my secondary education at Prempe College. Prem oh, uh, nice know. one, nice one. Yeah, what so actually got you into music production? Well, music production, uh, when you go into my family, yeah. my maternal grandfather was mm. a trumpeter okay the local presbyterian church i will go presbyterian Ebenezer presbyterian church so at sunday school people you know during sundays after our sunday uh, school we just mm. go to the main church mm -hmm. and you see me sitting by the organ we call them organists organists you know, yeah sitting by them pressing them the they will not big allow, one yeah they will not allow you so i had the opportunity of going to primary college and i from one i joined the school choir mm. yeah that's where my music is instinct started you know coming up oh. so during during the school choir i had some tutorial from our music teacher the late and sansari his son yeah Do, um, middle studio dominic and sansari yeah dominic he Ansansari. was my junior but oh. he was yeah he was playing the school keyboard for us while okay. but he was doing even in form one so i had to you know let him teach me the rudiments of music mm. fortunately in the school choir do you know whom i was with the school choir no tell me dr matu who could <laughs> <laughs> so Napo was was a chorister. Yes, he was singing alto and I was singing tenor. And then uh, Middle Street was playing. No, there. wait. Napo, our very own Napo. Oh, Napo, yes. we all know. I have pictures with him before. He was singing. And we sat in the same class till so the time we completed. Wow. Our passage, okay. You know, you okay. Know. okay. So all right. All right. All right. The music developed from there. And mm. then in 1985, I had a chance of working with a, a choir master. Mm -hmm. There was a church in Kwanzaa called Olumba Olumba Obu. He had a four-track mixer. Okay. That was the revolution of digital recordings. Recording, Four-track yeah. mixer with cassette. And they had a Casio keyboard. So we would play, and then they would sing onto the track. 
The one that they take yeah. already hit so, it in our palm. That's right. Nice. So it is the same method that I have used in the present day DAWs that we are using in our mm. the same format. So that way I started learning. Then in 1987, in my house at Latvia Koshi, where I was staying with my eldest brother, Mr. Fretilla, who used to work at Ghana Airways. Mm. That's where I started recording people like uh, Nana Boa Jess Yama. So I quite remember in 1989, Samuel Samuel Usu's recording. Yeah. 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 There was a studio at uh, Zogo Junction, mm -hmm. Ruth Anabo. That's where they were doing programming. Mm. That was using Atari computer to program. Mm. And I had a keyboard, Casio. Uh, sorry, my Yamaha keyboard. Yeah. He came to rent. So most of the tones that you hear in that song was taken from my your keyboard. Yes. Wow. But I was working with Shell as a fuel station manager. Mm. The ring road when you are going to the bus stop from Circle or the Ranza Société General. Yeah. It's here the fuel o station. Opposite. I think yes. now is a so uh, energy. That's something. right. Yeah. I was managing the, that place oh. from 1990 to on the 15th of January. 1996. And you decided so, you do it. Again. Yes, that's because I was doing it alongside the music. The music. But so in 1996, I started concentrating fully on, on music. music and the rest is history. All right, we'll be coming back to you now. Appear to uh, where did you meet music production? I mean, was it a passion that you developed, or it just happened to you by chance? Well, like like Freddie was saying, I started in the church playing keyboard in the church. I started. You know, I was with um, Assemblies of God in Dansuman, and um, is the exhibition? I, also went, I was also first at um, Olivet, Mount Olivet, Dan Okay. Suman. Yeah, then I went to Four Square Gospel uh, Church, where I met Dennis Boachi, who taught me, you know, how to play the keys. And from there, I started playing shop, and I ended up at Orion Cinema with, um, how do you call it? Um, the, uh, what is his name? Sorry for my question. So from there is when I went to Fredima's place. I don't remember. Fredima, what year did I come to your place? 1997. Uh, 1997. Yeah, so I think, I think how many years will I be 30 years in the industry? I think in a few years. Uh, I'll yeah. Be 30 yeah. <laughs> in the next four years. Yeah. Wow. Three. Yeah. Hey, next three, three years, years and next two years. You're in 2024. So the next two years will be 30 years in the industry. Wow, that's that's yeah, very very you. good. Hmm. All right. Now, can you just uh, I feel to can you tell me some of the notable people you've worked with as a music producer? I mean, the popular ones that we know, and also the unpopular ones that we do not know about. Um, I work with a lot of people. <laughs> a lot. Um, I don't know if I can count. Um. Yeah, I, I work. I work with um, Prayer, Daddy Lumba. Le, le, I think I have a list here. I can look at it and tell you. Yeah. The people. I work with Prayer. I work with Wuta. I work with Four X Four. I work with um, Five Five. I work with Castro. I work with Daddy Lumba. I work with Frampos. I work with Kufiti. I work with Inkase, Sarkodie, Lord Kenya, Bookback, Obrafo, um, Screwface. Mm. Adani Pes, Ako Nana, Becca, Nana Champong, Bade, Kwabuna Kwabuna, Brades, Ochiame Kwame, Berima Sydney, KK Fosu, Inframa, Caesar, Omai Hinipozo, KTK, Obuo, Nana Kwame, Eresi, Rexoma, Reggie Zippy, Old Soja. It's okay. I bet this is okay. I bet this is okay. It's okay. Because <laughs> it's literally the entire industry that you are mentioning right there. Uh, wow. Yeah. Now, let me come in the studio. Frediwa, can you also, off the top of your head, mention, give us also a list of the people you've worked with oh, in this I've industry? I've worked with a lot of people who, from 1992, the likes of Cropper from CHM. Mm -hmm. Ziggy, uh, uh, Ziggy, I call Ziggy Mali. I call Ziggy Mali. Yeah, uh, I'm sure call... most of the people who are watching us. Do. Oh, they know. The no, older people Michael, know. Ekomaika, Ekomaika, Ekomaika. Yeah, yeah, okay, Ekomaika, okay, okay. Ekomaika, Obojuma, Shashamali, Matatri, Matapupu, the whole album. You produced it. Yeah, myself, yeah, my, we were three. You see, what was happening in our days that mm -hmm. did, between the period from 1990 mm. was that one couldn't claim ownership to. Of, to yeah, it was, that, it was until. That we had the PC that we can record your music, 
Okay. In the vocal until, but we are doing it in, in groups and a whole lot. Oh. Yeah, so, so how was recording like back in the, back in the, in the 80s? It was yeah. analog. It was later that in 1990, <clears throat> I acquired Atari computer. I had about three of them. Mm. Whereas the, the likes of Zamalet, uh, Sami Awani used to come and rent and then. Mm. So my, my studio became a reference point in terms of programming. We would play the beats mm -hmm. and then we send it to the bigger studios for you oh. to do the uh, So mm. most of the first time in terms of their music, Jenny started from my place. Mm. Most of the recordings were done there. I quite remember Cheba for a so lot of highlights from DJ Hammond and a whole lot of things. Mm. Then for Ponsa, Kofi B. I did a whole lot of that. That's really Jamret too. All right. Was also part. Now, this question is to both of you. Do you both remember the very first artist that walked up to you and was like, oh, I want to work with you? Yeah, she's called Selena Olin in 1988. Okay. Yeah. I used to stay with her in Latte Biakoshi. Okay. She's now domiciled in the UK. Oh. Yeah. I, th I think she was taking care of Lumbe's, what do we call it, a CD store. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shop. Yeah. yeah. So Lumba took her to London mm. when, when, when they went to play there and she never came back. So Selena Olin's Lindsay. Oh, by just Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe she got married there and then yeah. had, 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 had her own. Yeah. All right, now, Apio Tooth, how about you? Do you remember the very first artist you worked with when you became a producer? Hey, Fredima, did I work with somebody at your place? Yes, there's remember. a story between Apio Tooth and Ufuram Ponsa. I had really? Trained, yes. I wanted to send him, then he would come and send me. I, That's I, what he was doing. Uh, when did that what? <laughs> so let me tell you the story. When you send me Ufuram Ponsa, then he would come and tell me that Fredima said I should go and buy this. You know what they sent him? <laughs> <laughs> you know, my fact, I, I, I will, I will part appear, appearance on the show there for expanding my studio when he was there. Okay. I named him, or I, 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 <laughs> I gave him a name. I forgot. I forgot what's the name. What's Oba, the name? Oba. 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 At that time, to Kwame Yeboah, yeah, who plays for Craig David, yeah, he was the top. So I appear, appear wanted to you know have that kind of challenge, yeah. So you come to the studio, fiddle with certain things, then you went to press the thing, and the, the thing asked him, "Are you sure?" He said, "Yes." Then he deleted all the all oh, the information oh, oh, oh. from my keyboard. Charlie, that was we bad itself for Charlie. <laughs> but we had something that we call synchronizer. Yeah, it was only just for you to just switch a switch. Yeah, yeah. we we always had to go to other studios and then rent them. Apia said, ah, but when you have this one, how I can't it work? Let me switch it on to this one. Pa, Charlie, that year, that didn't say, you made money. Oh. And listen to this one. Ophoria Ponsa, at that time, I finished training Apia to, and I've seen his level, what he can do. Yeah. So I asked Ophori that he should let Apia program Produce. a song. I said, Ophori said, David, 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 Apia said, I practice, he doesn't like. Oh. But in life, later, who gave uh, Ophoria Ponsa all the... I mean, it was, it was a Apia to. Apia to. So, Apia to. Apia to. Apia That's right. That's it. Uh, <laughs> all right. It's, now, we want to play a few songs from uh, these uh, artists that you worked with. And we'll start with, I mean, Ophoria Poza, because you're talking about Ophoria Poza. Yeah. And we have this song here called Odom Refie. Mm -hmm. uh, I know most of you know this song, but let's check out this, uh, you know, uh, song. And uh, appear to tell us the, the whole story about Odom Refie. Yeah, now we have to tell that story. Hey. Odom Refie, I think, I think I did the remix rather. You yes. did the remix? Oh, so Fred, Fred yeah. Uncle Fred I'll did the uh, original. No, I'll tell Let's you check out Don Refi. A song by Daddy Luba. It's a song by Ophoria Ponsa featuring Daddy Luba. But Uncle Fred is going to tell us, I mean, the story behind the song. Because most people get confused. You know, when they hear songs by, oh, if it is Echo featuring, let's say, Kasake, then Echo has to sing first. Kasake will come mm. second. But in this case, this song is owned by Ophoria Ponsa. But it's Daddy Luba that we are hearing yes, more. Fish, fish, yeah. yeah. So the story is this. Ufuria came to me in 1992 mm -hmm. from Konungu Dumase. We were all happy to come from the same town. Okay. He said he's gotten a song that he wants to sing that, like Daddy Lumba. Daddy Lumba too is my uh, schoolmate. He was in Jobin and I was in Premier okay. College. Yes. Oh, so okay. I, I, I knew him from that time. Way back. Way back. Okay. So Ufuria came and then on that night I went to buy this type of keyboard. Okay. So I programmed this song, Udombre Fie, plus other four songs. Mm -hmm. Then I held his hand sat, sat, he sat in my car and then we took the demo to Daddy Lumba's house. Now, so or a studio? Upon, yes. No, no, his house. His house, okay. At Domi. Okay. Domi, 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 Domi,
we showed it, this thing to that we must say, ah, why Charlie, this guy can say, I will produce of rampant sir. So a guy was whom I was working with, he's called Kofi Esel. Mm -hmm. We he we he, from from there he took the demo and then went to Nana Abiyama Danso studio. It was at around circle, yeah. Yeah. To start reading the program. So the programming, I also had my input. And we were supposed to record this at Combined House of Music, CHM. Okay. The day that we were recording that song, that was the day that I gave birth to my first son. Oh uh -huh. what's his name? Chemensa. Chemensa. Oh, okay. Okay. He must be. He's a gospel uh, artist. He's yes. a gospel artist. He must be like around 30 by now. That's right. Okay. That was the time that that was on the 14th of February. Oh. That's right. Val's Day. Val's Day. He was born on the Val's Day. Oh. Yeah. That was the day that we were recording this, this song. So we recorded the song, and then the Lumba took the mas uh, the master to what we call it uh, Germany. Okay. So we started to boost it up because at that time we were only having the computer. For it to program and then mm -hmm. record on the what eight track okay eight track yes so yeah. you take the master and then so we mostly have to travel, travel with the master to, 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 to go and master, master it. To the to, okay to go and master it so after mastering there was a problem between 1993 up to 1997 before the song was released so it was for four years yes four years it was almost shelved almost, for four years for, for four years almost wow before the song was released you know, so for for even came for me to do a gospel song for for him was attending your church here, uh, Baptist Church. Yeah, uh, Baptist. Baptist. yeah that's right. So oh. I did a gospel for forever before Dumba released this song. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. it was a song by Ophirian Ponsa, but then it was held on, let's say, yeah, because at that time, by Lumba. you know, Daddy Lumba was the one who was producing, and in terms of popularity, mm -hmm. he was more popular than, than Ophirian Ponsa. Ophirian Ponsa. So you, have to, you have to leverage on. The, the pedestal of Daddy Lumba to, you know, rise rise up. All right. So I, I like the fact that you've brought more clarity to this yeah, because yeah, 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 a yeah. lot more people think this song is oh, no, no. owned this by This is the Daddy song Lumba. that brought Ufuriam, but oh, okay. it was that song that made Daddy Lumba accept him mm -hmm. as a singer for him to produce him. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we'll go to one song that was produced by Apiatus, and we are talking about Tokrum by uh, Daddy Lumba. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear Tokrum, and then Apiatus is going to tell us what this song is all about. And then I'm paying you a Two's hardcore. Me ako shibia. Oh dear baby. Catch your baby ako shibia. Hi. Happy to us. Happy to see you with us. Oh. All right, all right, all right. I think we've lost connection with the Pewters. But, Uncle Fred, do you know, I mean, anything about this song? Oh, uh, yes. Okay. I mean, Tell I us. Mean, uh, Daddy Lumba wanted to also give the sound engineers their work to do. So he started also producing from here. Because okay. those the production, what was, 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 you know, was, was that you would do the programming here, mm -hmm. take it to Bodo Staya, you know, to tweet certain things, and mm -hmm. then they will miss it out. But at that time, Apiatus was on top. You know, the first time in Guinea that I trained was JQ. You know, you know. Oh, the bottle breaker. Oh, yes. JQ is my student. He's the first son in Guinea. How many producers have you actually tra trained? Uh, for yes. the last time when I counted, it was about 75. 75 yeah, 15 producers? 15 librarians. Now, they're, they're all done in the, in the fifth, 75, yes. Producers. Producers. How many Ghanaians? Ghanaians are almost about 30 something. With Nigerians and then some also from. Do, do you remember their names? Oh, yes. Yeah. The, the, the guy who did 2020, 2024, form of Canada. Yeah. The guy who did the sign is called Canada. Canada, okay. Yeah, it's at the Bekala Pass here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then if you go to UK, it's called Charles Kwe. Charles Kwe? He's, he's playing for Am, 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 Amapino, the Zimba. Amapino, okay, okay. Then okay. there's a guy here called Bishop Mante. Bishop Mante, okay. Then Ujeke, uh, 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 Samuel Saki. Mm -hmm. Then Don Wagzi. Don Wagzi. Wagzi. Mm -hmm. Wagzi is at uh, Laboni. Okay. There's a lot of, most of these voiceovers and a whole lot of mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and JQ. And JQ, Apia Tews. Apia Tews. I've worked with Kwame Eboe too. Okay. And a whole lot of guys, you know. Wow. They are around. Wow. I have the list there. Yeah. Mm. So when you see all these people, when they see them thriving, oh, how does it make you feel? Kali, I feel so good. I mean, you remember last Saturday where yeah. we, Went to the mixing that yeah. you know what Stoneboy said about me. Yeah, this? I was the first person who gave Stoneboy a live band performance. And mm -hmm. my, my studio was the first place that Samini held a microphone to sing. What did you actually what do you see in this? Is it that when they come to you, you see that you know, yeah, this I guy see, has potential? Yes, I see, I see them. Has, has an artist ever walked to you and you're like, uh, and you name farmer also go and find something else? Yes, I've it. said certain things to some of them. There was mm -hmm. one guy called uh, uh, Masha. Mm -hmm. Masha is a, he was a very good rapper, but ask, uh, he, he knew how to do, you know, uh, the computer IT stuff. Mm -hmm. So I asked him to go into what we call it uh, editing, video editing. 
So he ended up at Botimedia, who was the head when they started a streaming on these multi platforms. Mm -hmm. He was in charge and he went to Max TV. Now he's in the United States of America. Oh, he, was, okay. he was a very good rapper, mm -hmm. but I told him that he can be better in the field of TV and a whole lot of things. All right. you know? What did you see about Stoneboy and Samini, which made you actually give yes. them the chance? There was a group at, at Abraka called mm -hmm. Legal Amamre and then Five Five. You remember Five Five? Yeah, I, I yeah. discovered them in my studio before I appeared to recorded them. Really? Oh, yes. That is puppy. And it's, my student I recorded this. You see, what was happening was that most of the time, most of these guys that came up, KK for 12, I had the... My, my student was, as I told, was a reference point in terms of programming. Yeah. So when they do programming, they'll do a voice over, over it and they may go and show it to producers. But most of the producers who were working with other sound engineers. Okay. So when, oh, Charlie, wait, they may sound engineer and so let me go there. Mm. So most of the work that I did, sometimes you, you see them being, being done in another city because... My studio wasn't fully packed in terms of modern equipment. I had the computer only mm, mm. and some basic equipment like uh, what we monitors. Mm. So they come and do the programming. The programming mm -hmm. was the actual thing. Oh, and then okay. We go to the other studio like Ghana Films, CHM, and other places. All right. So Samini was a mm -hmm. student at St. Mary, Margaret Mary. Yes, St. Margaret Mary, so, yes. Yeah. He, Reggie Zippy, Borax, mm -hmm. and uh, the likes of Titak. They were students at uh, Accra Academy. Yeah. They will run away from school and then come to my studio to record. During school hours? Yeah, school, after school. But, why, were you, why are you not sucking them to go no, back no, to after school? school. After they will come there. Yeah, they will okay. come in the school. I quite remember when Zipi coming to me to record. He didn't have money. He had to go and sell his uh, school uh, attire at the Tema Station. Actually, no. I would do it for him for free. Wow. Yeah. So Samini came to record in my studio. Legal Amamare as a student. Mm hmm then there, that was the time that I was also working on Maria Japan's my idea at the day. You know, we'll be, we'll be checking out uh, uh, oh, that okay. song very soon. Oh, okay. So the first microphone that Samini held, that you he could hear himself very well. I mean, he said this to the whole populace in Ghana when that last three years when we were presenting something for the TGMs. Yeah. Yeah, he said this one. You know, before pa the, the five fives, I also did the demo for them. Then Bulldog came for them. Oh. <laughs> so most of the musician, their first point of call in terms of studio recording was my place. Was your place? That's why a lot of people passed there. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. But since you've mentioned uh, Adidede by Mary Japon, let's let's hear Adidede. Probably you might have forgotten the song we are talking about. Let's try and refresh your memory with Adidede by Mary Japon. The man who produced the your score, Kajudon Ko, mm -hmm. he was a diplomat. He he brought Mary Japon to my studio. Okay. To record. At that time I finished training J JQ. So JQ will be in the studio with the man. So that's where my marriage point that I had that kind of connection. Connection. So this recording, myself, if you hear the pages, the okay. drums, yeah. that might mean. Then the bass line was a guy called Soroku, he's dead. Oh. Pa, 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 pa. Pa. That one to my, my one guy, the guy that I trained, it's called Palupa. He too is dead. So were all these live like instruments that were being played? No, all of them were, were, were from the keyboard. Keyboard, yes. Okay. So we used Atari to program. There was no PC. Uh, what we call the, the, the PC that we are using, like the QBs and those yeah. sort of, no. It was only the Atari computer, that was uh, what we call it. Uh, they call it a certain, oh, I've forgotten the name. Uh, uh, sequencer. Sequencer, ah. okay. Sequencer. So you sequence. play on the keyboard. keyboard then we have something that we call synchronizer. Okay. We synchronize it to the, the tape. Okay. The, the analog tape. Oh. And they will synchronize. Then it picks. So while, the, yeah, while the, this thing will be playing from the Atari computer, it will pick the tones from the keyboard oh and then it was a very nice scene when when when, when you were, were recording and then the recorder will pick your voice yeah so you have different sessions of this now wow wow so, but okay go ahead yeah so we recorded this one and then went to mr Quache's studio mm -hmm. it was at the La Paz here where we, that's where we completed oh. so that, that, that time we recorded this one then there was a song. My baby, my my baby, 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 if you if you notice this era that we are talking about, so we are talking about the late nineties into the early two thousands. Most of the songs were lyrics heavy, mm -hmm. so it has to be like storyline. Yeah. So. 
I won't go. So you realize that she's telling you a, a story. story of something that is happening in mm -hmm. her life. Mm -hmm. Was it a must for something like this to happen before somebody will be able to produce a song and put it out no, there? No, if you go to the exigencies of time, mm -hmm. from the 70s, the songs that they produced, from the Danam producer, there were storylines. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then the, the, when Sweet Talks, yeah. and Sweet Talks, you know, started recording okay. in Jualaka, also they started changing the, the, the trend. Mm -hmm. So it came in, in the eight, 80s, yeah. where the delights of Admaku Nyamiche and a whole lot of you also change the status quo. And then come the year 2000. These were the new and at that time, hip life yeah. had evolved. evolved. So it was a mixture of the old high life with the hip life that someone was also going through. So if you look, listen to the music from the 2000s up to now, mm -hmm. to the time that these are my pianos and this, you can see that kind of vast yeah. difference in terms of very, the very structure. Like a massive, massive, mm -hmm. massive difference. But back then, you were telling me it's fun, but were you also facing some challenges? What were some of the challenges that you were facing back then? The challenges there? was that uh, 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 studio wasn't that much in Ghana in terms oh. of uh, 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 its availability. Okay. Some of the studios that were dotted around were the present day TV3, okay. Ghana Films. Yeah. Then Kodesh. Kodesh at Tes Tesano, uh, was, was North Kaneshi. North Kaneshi. Okay. The, there was a studio called, called Elephant Walk. Elephant walk. Yeah. Okay. That present, that. And then at Fedri, I also had one at uh, Kanda. Mm -hmm. And then Anna Buaba at in, in Tema. Oh, so it was like it was you, about five or six studios mm -hmm. before I came and then K case frequency, KK. Okay. There, there were there were series of you know small small studios that we were doing the programming. But mm -hmm. the main studios that you can have a complete no we were, they were about over almost about three or four. Oh. Five, yeah. So we had that kind of challenge. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the studio, you have to book for a month. All like these days that you go to the studio, within a matter of hours, you just finish. Wow. The month, yeah, because so you, you have, have to, to book a month. A month ahead. I quite remember in 1996, mm -hmm. when Reggie had come from abroad and then he had gone to CHM, mm -hmm. Combined House of Music, at Bateko, and he wanted to book uh, the place for, for his music. Mm -hmm. For three months, he had occupied the night. Oh. Yeah, for three months, Reggie, every time that you go, Monday to Friday, Reggie Rosen had booked the place, you know, oh. working with the likes of Zamalet, the oh. Samir Wanis, and a whole lot of things. Wow, wow. So until the year 2000, when PC, I could record on PC, PC yeah. people having that kind of access, it was there that, you know, the, the, the gap opened for other people to also feed in. In this era, where we doing a lot of, like, live recording, so... We have like a full band, like we were playing in the studio. Mm. We have a full band that's playing, you know, live drums, live bass, live keyboard for us to record. In yes, era. in fact, this is mostly is being done by the gospel artists. Okay. Yeah, because okay. the church has that kind of ambience. Mm -hmm. they, they record most of them live. But for the high life, we also record live. Mm -hmm. But however, we are not recording simultaneously. Mm -hmm. We do them in bits. Yeah. And now with the advent of technology, there's no need for even the details to be in the studio. Yeah. We have something that we call steps. Yeah, you can play. You can play. Because currently I'm re recording from some people. They just send me the steps. I play the beat. I say, send it to them. They sing and they send me the steps. I have guitar playing here and other people it's, play on board. When, do you miss that era? We miss that era, but it was very tedious in that era. It was era. very, very tedious. Because, for instance, mm -hmm. if you go back to the, the 70s, yeah. when you are recording, like the, how these guys were playing, yes. ready, go. The, the slightest mis mistake you have to start, <laughs> start all over everything again. Yes. Because they were not recording in tracks, they were recording something mono and something yeah. zero. Everything comes like oh, a stereo. Yeah. Yes. So the sound engineer should make sure that all the frequencies that he's chosen should conform to the basic instruments that he selected oh. for them to be recorded. Wow. It's, not, it's just fun to record. However, <laughs> the modern day recording is quite, you know, on top in terms of yeah. the structures. It's is the is the modern day making it more like it's flexible yeah, yeah is, it, is it too flexible now? it's too flexible now it's too, too flexible, flexible. oh my god it's flexible you wish you could if you back. know the terrain how to you know yeah. mix it it's too flexible because most of them mm -hmm. have the template already yeah. so yeah. you just fix in whatever you want nice. and then you can also save certain parameters mm -hmm. that you want that live i've done this mix this mix is very good all other mixes should take that kind of form you just Go and press and then you just quack, 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 yeah, you just assign right. them. But you know, there was this era also of Azonto, yes. and uh, we have Apietu's back okay. uh, with us on Zoom now. Uh, Azonto Fiesta that was uh, by mm -hmm. Sarkodie. 
uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's check out our zone to fear then appear to is actually going to tell us the history or the story behind Azon to Fiesta. Enjoy. This one there, over to you. But yeah. before that, you were supposed to tell us something about Tokru, you know, because it was one of the hits that, I mean, that was produced by you. So give us a brief one about Tokru, then you zoom into Azon to Fiesta. Tell us the whole story about Azon to Fiesta, because for me, I am so sad that we couldn't promote this very general, or this very sound, for it to become like a, a global hit, like these people have decided to take you right now. Okay. Well, okay. Um, how do you call it? Uh, it was uh, my compilation. I was doing my compilation. I, I used to work with uh, different artists and put them on one album. That Pietus compilation, one, two, three, you know, yeah. if you remember. Yeah. And I called Sarko there that I wanted him on the um, song. But before then, the same beat that is playing, I had given it to 4 x for. I gave it to Edem. You know, I gave it a couple of people. And they were saying, oh, no, no, they feel this type of beat. Type of, I should give them another one. Then I sent it to Sarkozy. When I sent it to him, he was not in Ghana. Oh. Natural fact. He said he wrote the lyrics in an airplane when he was coming back to Ghana. Well, I was giving pressure that I will give the beat to somebody else. So he said they begged me, boss. Then he came down and then executed, you know, the thing. And that was it. Big song. But, Fred, uh, sorry, appear to appear to There is something yeah. I really want to understand about this because it was not something that was already there. So what actually gave you that inspiration to try and experiment with something like this? If you ask me, I will tell you. Me, I like to experiment. <laughs> Constantly, I'm always experimenting. I like to do feature, feature. I want to know, you know, um, how things work. You know, I want to always dive deep. And so every time I'm experimenting with genres, beats, and all that. Oh. So I do it, and I like it, and I think it's crazy. Then, yeah, uh, we'll go for it. Wow, wow, wow. That was, that was very, very good. But also about Tokrum, because when we, when we played Tokrum, you were not here. Uh, what was that? Uh, what? Tokrum uh -huh. is a different, but if you listen to the song, that Luma at some point said, the tools hardcore already made. Yeah. Because what happened is, this is my experimentation of making beats, now this on wild beat. Then he came and said he wanted to do a song, the song is Tokrum, and I said, oh, listen to this beat. And let's see. When he listens to Tali, he go go. Then he took the beat away. He came the next time, and then he put the, you know, uh, he put the voices on it, and then boom, it was wow. a big hit. So wow. he said in the song that the tools had for already made. That means when he came, the beat was already done. Oh. So he had to go and put his voice. So, and but that's that doesn't work like that. Usually, he want to sing, then you follow him. Okay. So you sing the song, then you follow what he's singing, then you play accordingly. Mm. He, there's no way you eat, and then he will accept. <laughs> oh, so does it mean that back then I mean, he you were? It. Does it mean that back then you were producing like beats and then like okay, I've produced this, so I'm keeping it in the fridge, fridge. I'm in fridge in quotes, but then I'm keeping it for. Well, I was doing that, and I'm still doing it. Mm. Oh, wow, wow, yeah. Wow. I mean, I'll make the beat. I mean, you tell me to say Charlie beat in your wardrobe, then I'll give it to the person. Wow, we, we, wow. We work on it. Wow. Now, have you? ever during this era have you did you ever suggest to an artist that oh no this beat or this general that you want to sing no sing this particular one is going to be a hit oh yes oh yes we've done several okay we've any done, any any of the artists that you remember the song? I, can't, I can't remember celestine donko mm -hmm. when i discovered celestine donko i mean they're like the pet, uh, pedicostal style you know she had that kind of flair but i asked her to go further and if you listen to her songs right now you, she infused that from the South Africa, Kenya, and then other places into her song. Because she's versatile. Yeah. So definitely, any song that you give to her, mm -hmm. she'll definitely have a way of meandering her way around it, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. A lot of people have also come. Mm -hmm. I quite remember when we were doing Shashamali Matatri, Matapope, yeah. myself, Wagzi, and then Kafui Day played Kafui the Day, keyboard. Yeah. yeah, I was on, on the computer, and myself, and then Wagzi. So we suggest to uh, Shasha, Shasha, this comes, I think if you play like this and the whole, or this one, if you, the key is able to change, you can go around it, mm. you know. So we've done severally. Several. So as he's saying, I mean, we come to the studio first. When anything come, crops up, you play it. When somebody comes, you show, oh, Charlie, this is the beat that I play. Oh, Charlie, it's nice. 
give That's it to right. me. You see, during my time, mm -hmm. my concentration more was on jingles. I was making money from jingles. Oh, oh yes. Okay. What, what are some oh, of the jingles my, that you Farmer jingles, farmer, oh. and then uh, shall I to shall I pray? Uh, 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 <laughs> oh, hey, show <laughs> Tobacco, I did all. Oh, oh then uh, 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 ozone chemist. Uh, uh, there are a lot of them. You know, most of the Fira series. Yeah. Most of the adverts that you see, the uh, you were the brain behind. The brain, brain, brain behind. Wow. Anyway, yeah. but now when we come to the new school, right? What are some of the mistakes? I'll put it that way. That people are making currently when it comes to the new school. Yeah, the, the new school. There's a difference between knowing IT, how mm -hmm. to use the computer, computer, uh -huh. and then knowing music. Music writes on frequencies. Mm -hmm. So in order to embellish some of the songs, they override in terms of using the frequencies. And then the, the abuse of auto-tune. Auto-tune. Auto-tune is supposed to correct certain pitches. Mm -hmm. But you see that somebody is talking. Yeah. And then in the music, there's auto-tune on it. No. You can't put... When you're talking, it's not in key. Yeah. It, you can talk over any music. Am I lying? It's true. So if you're on a linear and you're you are streaming, then you put auto-tune. When the, 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 the voice comes for you to talk or something of that sort, then you put auto-tune. Mm. Definitely to the start. That speech, yeah, but it's mainly meant for songs, yeah, you know, where you can maybe tune it and then let have the key, yeah. That's why these are some of the mistakes that they are doing, all right, in terms of the mixing and because they have the, the things available, so it's just like putting uh, control means to and then X to all together, everything, yeah, 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 put yeah. yeah. yeah sometimes you have to be measured by. All right, uh, yeah. appeal to any any advice for the new school of producers that we have out there because it looks like. I mean, you are you are OGs and your songs are also very very timeless. But look at right now, producer, you produce one or then, Ajegu. Hmm. And now comes I'll make music. I mean, <laughs> well, I'll just tell them to keep pushing hard and you know learning the trade well. You know, like Sadima said, I mean, learn it well. I mean, uh, uh, watch what is happening outside. Listen to music that is being made by people who have done it, like you said, timeless and is still, you know, relevant. Then you, you try and get your frequencies and your mixing and everything right. If you don't you don't know how to do it, mm. I mean go and study how to do it properly. You know, then stop uh, you know um, depending on YouTube videos that I mean, oh yeah, they will teach me no. Usually those people come there just to get, you know, people to follow them and all mm. that. They don't really show you what you need to know. So this is uh, the issue. I think they should learn well. I mean, make sure what they are doing, they trade. You know, doctors go to school to, and they know they, they, they go and learn it. You mm. know, so you can't say you're a surgeon, but you learn it on YouTube. And anybody will come and give you a patient to open up his stomach to check one or two. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm sure if I say what well, I I learn how to operate on human beings. You know, so now I'm coming, I can operate on it. Will you agree? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Hey. You know. There's no way you are going to. Have it, so. <laughs> All right. You know, some music is playing in your stomach. <laughs> All right, but so I mean, it. I mean, this one thing I they just need to play everything. Yeah, but one thing I would like to know for these young um, new school of producers, Fredima and Apiotus, are your doors open for oh, anybody who we, wants to learn? We are open. In fact, about the new generation, they are very good. About in terms of playing of instruments, mm -hmm. they are they are solid. Mm -hmm. The new Jerry because they have everything to work with. Yeah. During our time, even tuning the guitar was even a problem. Where where was the keyboard that we were going to use? We were using pianos, and pianos too. Why they were using natural strings? Yeah. They they falter in terms of the weather as when when oh. the weather is yeah, you don't get the right tuning. Okay. So if you listen to some of the songs of old, mm -hmm. if you play them and then you want to get the right key, you see that there's a kind of small transposition okay. in terms of the key or the pitch. Yeah. Uh -huh. But right now, the generation for today, Charlie, they are so what you have to do is more practicals. Mm. Music is about practicals, sound engineering, practicals. You take one song, you take one, one, one frequency or one, uh, what we call it, uh, um, it slide. Yeah, okay, uh -huh. Fade yeah. the you be, you be treating them, you put them in the melding, flat. They will be, okay, okay, so if I go here, yeah, that's how it sounds like. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm. We got piano. And then in terms of uh, mixing, you, some, you craft something that we call panorama. Mm -hmm. The year is too. As you are sitting with me, yes. as I'm talking, all the two years I hear. Yeah. But if somebody is here talking to me, I only hear from the right ear. Oh. So you need to have to separate them. Which of the instruments are mono instruments? Which of mm -hmm. them are stereo? 
that the drum kick is a mono instrument. So when you are ever you are mixing, you have to make sure that it is in the middle. Bass is a mono instrument. It has to go through. But something like the guitars and the other pedals like keyboards, you can find them. So that Charlie, you have that kind of quadrophonic or stereo kind of sound into your ears, you know. So these are practical things that they have to really learn. Me. Today, after today, <laughs> I am a music producer. <laughs> Bring your music and I'll produce it for you. Uh, yes. But thank you very much, uh, Frederick Chambers of Fredima. And then also thank you, Apiatus, for making us an, you know, understand this era of music. Because we used to enjoy them, but we didn't know the stories behind some of these things. So thank you very, very much for gracing our studios and you know giving us thank all this. Thank you very much. We are still in the business. If you want Fredima, actually. Yeah. Come to Pukwasi just after the internship. My studio is there. Okay. Okay. Let's work okay. 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 So, I mean, if you want to get in touch with Fredima, Easy, just get to Pukwase and get to meet him and have a good time with him. And he'll produce a very, very beautiful one for you. Maybe I'll be, I'll be the next act. Oh, come, come, I've done some, for, 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 some. There's one guy, guy called Black Ice. Yeah, Black Ice. If you finish, go and check him. I should check him check out. His, check his songs. All of them by me. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll go for it. And also, thank you very much, Apiotus, for, I mean, joining us and making us have such a good yeah, conversation. Big up, big up. Yeah, and then also, it's been a father son relationship today on the show. I've enjoyed it so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll go for a quick commercial break. When we come back, we have Kenny Ice and Ara DJ for you. Don't go anywhere.